Shut up and sit down. Happy Halloween, friends. Um, this is Andy from Big Mix Workshop and Painting Studio. Well, I say happy Halloween, happy whatever time of year it happens to be when you're watching this video. Now, this is something a little bit different. With, because it's Halloween around about the time when we're actually painting this, we're painting this kind of weird demon-y thing from the War Machine Hordes range. Uh, as you can see, it's some kind of weird horse, demon, person, creature. Uh, it's very difficult to explain. Uh, really cool figure, really enjoyed painting it, it was kind of a weird experience. As you can see we've got on a, uh, getting right on into it, black base as always, and we're starting off with uh, the, horse, ho the horse fur to give you something to look at. And this is uh, Mornfang Brown. Once we've gone over the, uh, the horse and got a nice uh, even coat on that, we're going on to the, the demon-y face. And we're using a Tindalos red base just to get, again make it stand out from the rest of the model so I can actually differentiate between the two pieces of um, uh, the, the, th the three faces, shall we say. And onto the human -y face. And this is Blacker Brown. Uh, all three, um, these two paints are both from Scale 75. Obviously, Monfang uh, Brown is a GW paint. So, after a couple of layers of um, each of these three paints, we're going to um, finish off the uh, blocking with Steel Legion Drab onto the robes. Uh, some kind of weird hag robes. Um, really difficult to uh, describe. It's got kind of look like mummy um, wraps or something as well. Uh, it's a very unusual um, figure to paint, put together, uh, as you can imagine. And on to the, uh, the the long hair. I've also um, I'm using Skaven Bite Dinge. I'm also carrying this on with the witch's hair itself as well. Uh, sort of tie the, uh, tie the three uh, creatures together using a similar sort of uh, colour palette to make it sort of look like it's essentially one creature with three faces, which is a weird concept in itself. Okay, so next is um, Dark Tone, and that's getting washed all over the Mornfang, all over the skin, all over the uh, Steel Legion Drab, everything, basically. Uh, obviously it's been thinned down so we uh, get a good coverage. I'm using a nice large brush, quite quite bad and bruised, but all, all the same, it doesn't really matter, it's only a wash, it's just going on everywhere. And then we're adding uh, some Steel Legion Drab again onto the uh, robes. I'm going to get the uh, robes uh, painted up nicely so we've got somewhere to start and you've got something to look at. And uh, There's no real set order what um, you could paint this in, it's just the order I, I chose. Um, interestingly, it's got a kind of human torso, uh, so it's also got sort of like Minotaur-esque features, which um, just adds to the weirdness. Once uh, we've got the uh, Steel Legion Drab as a second base layer, we're adding some Rakar Flesh. Now, as you know, um, recently I've taken um, a lot of time using Rakar Flesh, it's really making some interesting colours. I do recommend, if you don't have it, using it in your uh, colour palettes, it really does make a a lot of difference to your uh, color, uh, to your colors. So I'm adding some more Rakar flesh here. Again, just brightening that color up. I want to keep it fairly soft, uh, quite pastely, which is a nice effect what you do get with the Rakar flesh. The colors tend to be a little bit more pastely, uh, as it's uh, quite a pinky uh, shade. So you just, uh, and also uh, just focusing on high spots, um, adding more and more depth to the model. As you can see, we're getting a, a nice, easy highlight. So back onto the, uh, the human-esque human -es face. Uh, this is uh, Black Hurt Brown again by Scale75. You could easily be replaced with uh, Xandri Dust or something like that. Uh, I like the Scale75s. So they tend to move really nice. And I'm just getting, a, again, um, cleaning up the, uh, the areas where it's been, uh, the wash has been a little bit heavy. And now I've added some Ishtar Pink into the mixture. So Ishtar Pink's, uh, again, really soft. And I'm using it to start building up those highlights around the uh, the nose, the brow, the cheeks. All that sort of uh, stuff. Because uh, it's quite a detailed face, actually. Um, you can, it looks quite old um, and haggard, but also very menacing. So now I've added some Resurrection Flesh into it. And this is uh, going to start really brightening them uh, facial features up. I really want to... Uh, make the face look quite interesting because it's really uh, a really unusual uh, sort of feature 
um, notwithstanding its position, of course. Once I've got the uh, Resurrection Flesh, it's now adding some Rakor Flesh to it. And as you can see, you get some nice uh, highlights to it. Now, uh, the Rakor Flesh um, really starts to make the skin look pasty and old, uh, which is the sort of effect I'm going for. Uh, this um, you can change up by using uh, different colours. Uh, adding uh, more colour will make, him, make the creature look a bit younger. So now I'm using Moonray Flesh by Scale 75, and what this is going to do is just add those uh, nice bright highlights uh, of the edges uh, across the tip of the nose, the uh, cheekbone, across the brow, maybe uh, the, the uh, top lip and uh, the chin. Any of the areas what you think what, what would catch the light naturally more than other areas of the face. And as you can see, I'm just using a really fine brush at this point, so I want to get these uh, highlights really neat. So now I'm going to start adding some um, depth of colour into it. Now I'm using Drakenhof Nightshade now, uh, and as you can see, I'm just painting really uh, thin Drakenhof Nightshade into the creases and into the recesses. What this is going to do is going to um, the blue is going to um, draw the flesh down and going to um, make the flesh look a lot more worn, a lot more haggard. Uh, it's going to uh, really start to add detail into it. I'm also going to now start using BL Tan Green. Uh, also, for the same reason as the uh, Drak uh, off Blue, it's going to just, again, change the hue of the colour now um, and take it away from a more uh, a very human colour to a bit more uh, menacing, a bit more unusual. Uh, make it look uh, a lot, a lot less human than it uh, already did. And I'm adding also some Caraberg Crimson, exactly in the same way, using really thin paint on uh, a really narrow brush, so uh, positioning it uh, exactly where I want, uh, uh, where it wants to be. And I'm going around all the uh, all the creases where the skin would be stretched. So also um, focusing uh, along the eye li uh, the eye lines, and also uh, inside areas of the where the um, the other faces are stretching. So it's just going to start making the creature look a lot more in pain. Now as you can see, the uh, colour is really starting to um, bleed through now, adding those uh, different layers of washers um, in very specific areas to make it look a bit more interesting. Now XV88 is next, and that's going on all of the teeth. Um, the human, uh, the demon and the horse. Also it's going on all over the claws as well. Because uh, they've got a kind of a bony texture, and I just wanted the um, it, the B, the XVA is a really good color to base this, uh, so any kind of bone um, type um, material uh, with. And as you can see, using a couple of thin coats just to get a nice quality finish on there. Now, I've added some XV88 uh, to some Moonray Flesh now, and I'm going to start building up the colour on the um, on the teeth and the uh, claws. And this is going to uh, make the teeth and claws um, have a natural sort of uh, highlight to the, um, to the original, so it's going to look more bone-like. But we're also gonna, because of the XV88 uh, what's still in there, it's going to um, leave some yellow behind, so the teeth and the claws are going to be a little bit more dirty um, than I would normally paint, the, paint these things. Some, um, I'd add some extra Moonray Flesh. Um, for Moonray Flesh, you could quite easily use Screaming Skull, um, although there's a little bit more pink in it. And I'm just uh, building up those highlights now, as you can see, um, adding uh, progressively more and more of the um, light colour to uh, more, the more pronounced extended areas of the uh, claws and um, teeth. So now I've add, added some ivory, uh, which is almost, uh, almost a white, uh, kind of a yellowy white. Um, I, as you know, if you've watched any of our older videos, I use ivory quite a lot. And it's a very good colour for bone for obvious reasons. Um, and it makes a really good top highlight for the, uh, for bone cores. So just using that just to bring out the uh, final 
shade of the uh, of the of the bone and the teeth, just to bring out those nice um, sharp points where the uh, where the teeth and the claws uh, end. So I'm adding some Bloodfest Crimson now. Um, this is going to make it a bit more purpley, but I'll start changing my mind about the colour around about this stage. So we are going to take the colour in a completely different direction um, because I was unhappy with the direction it was headed. So what I'm doing, I'm starting to add a touch of Demon at Hide um, into the mixture. And this is going to take it a little bit more on a, a blue sort of... Uh, spectrum. It's going to make it look a little bit different. Uh, it's going to break uh, break up the bet uh, cores between the pinky cores between the face and the horse uh, nicely. It's also going to um, add a nice cool texture in between those two cores. What I didn't realise also whilst I was painting this is I was I was actually highlighting the uh, a couple of the teeth um, with the uh, skin new skin tone at the same time. So I do actually have to go back and uh, fix this at a, a later stage because I thought it was some kind of weird eyebrow, which, given the uh, model, is totally, um, totally a thing. So now what I'm doing, I'm adding some uh, more demon at hide. As you can see, it's becoming much more blue. Uh, throw in some washes in as well. Add some uh, extra de uh, definition to the creature. Um, the uh, first wash is a blue wash. It's going to make it a nice... Um, blue shade like our, how, how I envisaged it envisaged it and I'm also going to um, add some uh, a red wash around its uh, mouth around its mouth should I say uh, where where the creature's uh, mouth is dist distorted and stretched also on its uh, on the inner uh, side where um, the other mouth is biting into it so sort of giving it that kind of pained look So, some more demon at hide, uh, pretty much pure demon at hide out of this. And we're going to start taking it to an actual blue, purpley colour. It's going to cool it down nicely, um, and we're going to uh, really make that creature look a little bit more interesting. We're going to really start bringing out those interesting features on the uh, model. And what we're going to have to do is um, really focus on these uh, really distinct features because it's uh, be. The sculpting on this is, is really, really nice. And I really wanted to accentuate the uh, interesting features on it. So I'm adding some Rakar Flesh now. I'm just going to start adding some nice um, uh, paleness to the core. Because, uh, again, it's unnatural. I wanted it to be quite pale, uh, quite cool. Um, on, But also uh, the uh, Rakar Flesh also ties everything together because I'm using the rack of flesh throughout the model um, so there's always a touch of the same hue to uh, each of the colours and it's a nice way of uh, bringing multiple shades together even though they're completely different colours using the same mixture um, or the same highlight colour into it just brings the colours a little bit closer together so you get a really nice transition So adding this uh, Rakar Flesh ever so slowly into this purpley colour and it's going to just bring out that um, nice uh, texture and it's really going to start making it quite striking. Now as always with my paint uh, paint jobs, at this stage of the mo uh, model often looks a little bit weird, a little bit um, scruffy. Uh, it's just my painting techniques. I tend to uh, tidy things up as I go along um, as I tend to hop about whilst I'm painting so I tend to... Um, Things look a bit when it, it things don't look quite right when uh, when it's unfinished. So now what I'm doing, I'm going to put uh, some red into it again, uh, make it look a little bit more pained. Uh, I want a uh, red wash really stand out, uh, make it look really distorted and strained around it, uh, around its um, around its mouths really make it uh, look a little bit interesting but I'm also going back over it um, with the the highlight colour so the Rakarf and the um, Demon at Hide and this is going to um, allow me to tidy things up as and when I go along but also um, making sure that the 
the depth is where I want it to be. So yeah, adding yeah, just gentle touches of the red of, of the Caribou crimson into the uh, recesses around where the uh, where the stretch um, creature skin stuff would be. <laughs> so uh, moving on to the uh, horse flesh, and I've added. Uh, going straight from Warm Fang uh, Brown, adding some Cocum Copper into it straight away. And what this is going to do is just uh, really start to lift that colour. Um, using the uh, natural um, shape of the um, creature uh, to uh, uh, indicate where I'm highlighting. And what um, I'm doing is just adding, ever so, um, adding more and more Cocum Copper to it. This is quite a yellowy colour, which really makes it for a nice highlight over the Warm Fang Brown. And uh, it really makes uh, for some interesting colour uh, transitions over it. So I'm just um, going around where uh, whatever areas um, would be logical to highlight. So obviously the muscle texture, uh, extra work on the top of the uh, bridge of the nose, the eyebrows, um, its stomach, and also um, it te seems to be some kind of female hag. So um, a little bit of extra work around, around the um, top of the breasts, that sort of thing. And also we're uh, adding um, more and more coke and copper. This is pretty much neat coke and copper. I say neat, it's obviously it's thinned down a little bit. Um, and it's just uh, adding some nice uh, transitions, transitional colours to, um, to, to the mixture. Now what I'm going to do now is add a touch of Rakar Flesh in there, uh, which will come as no surprise as it's been pretty much a, a staple of this um, paint tutorial. But this is going to really add, um, allow the colour to be highlighted nicely, but also tied together with the other colours as, uh, as you'll see in a minute. So this is uh, going to really bring all the colours together uh, and make it look like more cohesive uh, in, in, in the whole. Here are a little bit more Rakar flesh and the model starting to come together now a bit. As you can see, it's uh, still a little bit uh, scruffy in places, but I'm just going to go back to that as in, uh, when I notice the uh, areas what need a little bit more work. Um, of course, it's not finished until you say so. so uh, as you can see, I'm just adding just touches of the uh, Rakar flesh, just in and around the model, um, adding little streaks of uh, colour variation around uh, any areas what I think would look nice with it. I'm going to start painting the uh, the the fur, the hair. Uh, it's all going to be, uh, as I said, it's all going to be the same colour. So this is just straight scaling back dinge, uh, just tidying things up where the wash was, and it's just going to uh, start. I'm going to start. I'm going to leave some of the wash showing through, but I do want a fairly even colour. So I'm going to let, allow the wash to be uh, a shade even though it's a, essentially a, a separate a different color to any of the uh, colors what's on the hair so unsurprisingly I'm adding some rack flesh into this uh, again it's going to lift the color nicely it's going to um, but it's also going to tie it together with the rest of the colors so you got a nice sort of unified um, scheme so it all looks part of the same um, same creature Uh, touch more Rakar flesh into it. Again, just uh, using the flat of a brush, uh, allowing the um, really well um, sculpted in detail to just um, take, take the paint naturally. So I'm adding uh, to the warts. I wasn't totally sure how I was going to paint them. Uh, out. That's uh, one of the reasons why I left them till last. Obviously, it costs the small details as well. Uh, I went for Strack and Green in the end. Um, I wanted it to look a little bit outlandish. Uh, again on the cool spot side of things because it's all on the uh, warmer brown colours um, also uh, just sort of stood out a little bit but because it's also quite yellowy uh, um, just it didn't oh, it didn't go too far so I've added a touch of Morfang flesh uh, Morfang brown into it into the green uh, to allow me to blend the um, the fur and the spots together and I'm going to start adding some Rock our flesh to brighten them up 
and this is just going to make them really uh, stand out but be, still be natural to the creature what it actually is. So here we go, uh, added a touch of uh, Rakar Flesh and a little bit of yellow in there, uh, just to start adding some nice highlights to the um, warts or spots or weird globby things, whatever they are. <laughs> I have no idea. This uh, creature has taken some... Um, it's definitely taken... Uh, it, I've definitely struggled to describe what I'm doing and why uh, a lot on this one because... It's just such an unusual figure. So now what I'm doing is going back to the red wash and just tidying certain things up with the wash, getting uh, them, them spots also looking kind of sore. Uh, as you can see, I'm using uh, a really narrow brush, painting it directly in there, um, getting getting the uh, get getting the ink exactly where I want it, and it's just going to bring those. Uh, Make make the creature look about a bit more sore in the areas where it needs to be. So there we are. It's had a pin wash now, and it's just brought everything together. Really does uh, the pin wash really does uh, emphasise uh, the model what you're doing. So it's uh, it can it separates all the different sections really nicely. And that's it. That is the Frightmare from the uh, Grimkin range from War Machine. I do recommend going up, taking a look at them. Uh, they are some wild models. I really can't rate them highly enough. There's some very cool ones. Uh, this was just one what really stood out to us as a bit of a weird thing. Um, and I do think me and Dodge are going to have a look at doing some more of them, them guys because they are kind of cool and really different. So any, uh, anyway, that's enough yapping for me. Thank you guys for watching for this long. Uh, huge thank you to you. If you've not um, seen any of our videos before, please hit like, hit subscribe and share with your friends. That's a massive help to us. It really does mean a lot. Huge thank yous to our Patreons, as always. Uh, if you're interested, check out our Patreon, um, where you get a whole bunch of dis um, advantages, including early access to all our videos. So massive thanks to the York boys, Matt, Ludwig Hofbauer, DWAC, Mark, Dave, Tom, Spiky Dude, Warren, Ben, and White Metal Games. You really do help us out. We can't keep the lights on without you guys, so it really is a massive help. Also, massive thank yous to our affiliate links. The links are in the description. They're the Outpost and Element Games. If you go through our affiliate links, uh, we get 5% store credit to any, um, for anything you buy at no cost to you. So it just helps us get more content out there for you guys so we can really um, advance the channel and uh, make the uh, prize pool a lot more interesting than it, um, than it has been at times. Anyway, guys, thank you to, for watching, and we shall catch you in the next one. Take care. And have a good day. Bye-bye.